Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Ruby Gill, and I feel honored to welcome you all on the behalf of lovely professional university for taking a key part in today's webinar entitled as Road to Recovery Physiotherapy as a Profession. So I'm sure that you all will feel enriched with the knowledge after the completion of today's webinar. So kindly allow me to introduce the experts of the day. I consider it a great honor to welcome the epitome of wisdom and intellect, Dr. Monica Gulati, Executive Dean, School of Pharmaceutical Sciences and Registrar, lovely professional university. She has been very instrumental in research when it comes to education. Having completed her B Pharmacy, M Pharmacy and PhD from UIPS, Punjab University, Chandigarh, Dr. Gulati has more than 25 years of teaching, industry, research and administrative experience. Her research forte is enhancing bioperformance of drug molecules, phytochemicals and probiotics, metabiotics and other therapeutics using conventional and novel dosage forms, especially in the area of cologne targeting. She holds a keen interest in the quality control parameters of delivery systems. She has to her credit more than 150 high impact publications and 15 invited book chapters with an H index of 28 and RG score of 39.43. She has been granted four Indian patents and three Australian patents as well. She is on the editorial and review board of more than 25 journals. So ma'am, it's a privilege to have you on board with us today. Thank you so much for joining us. I would also like to welcome our admission expert, Ms. Rachna Bajaj, Senior Assistant, Lovely Professional University. So attendees today, she'll take up, she'll give you an insight of eligibility fee and scholarship, which I'm sure will make you save a lot of money. And in addition to that, she'll also be sharing the infrastructure part of the university. So thank you, ma'am, for joining us. So with this, we'll begin our today's webinar. So I welcome you all once again to the webinar and hope that you all will have a great interaction with our experts. So over to you, Dr. Monica Gulati, ma'am, for the content of the day. Thank you, Ruby. Uh, please give me the yes. So good afternoon all and uh, I am here today basically to talk about you know a profession which has suddenly shot into limelight uh, particularly after this uh, pandemic and you know uh, we have all had our share of misfortunes as far as the pandemic was concerned we all of us had to undergo a very stressful period many of us lost our loved ones and uh, you know many of us who had the infection but we were able to fight it back you know there are many after effects of the infection which are being felt now apart from that the people who took vaccination there are also certain people uh, not many but a few people are uh, you know uh, feeling that there are certain after effects of the uh, vaccines also so here we have a profession which is able to help you, which is able to support the healthcare of the society at large without the intake of any medicines. You know, we are always trying to avoid the medications as far as possible because we do not want to, uh, you know, overload, overload our body system with any kind of chemicals or any kind of medicines, any kind of drugs. So it is always the preference specifically of, you know, our elders that try to avoid taking any kinds of medicine. So today I'm going to talk about a profession which would heal you, cure you and even 
prevent the uh, occurrence of diseases so it is going to aim both on uh, uh, you know prevention as well as cur curative effects of the physical therapy so we are going to talk about physiotherapy as a profession now what are the opportunities what is the pathway and so on so first i'll talk about the programs which are being offered in the stream of physiotherapy so as you can see we have uh, one single undergraduate program which of course you know then uh, dichotomizes into two further and then we have five options which are available in the post graduate program so if we talk of the undergraduate program we have bachelor's in physiotherapy this is the nomenclature which is prevalent all over the uh, country so bpt is basically a four and a half years program undergraduate program wherein you have eight semesters each of six months so eight semesters are dedicated to theory plus practical plus clinical so somewhere in the third semester you know you start getting some brief exposure to the uh, that means in your second year some brief exposure to the clinical settings and in fifth semester uh, that means when you enter into your third year the proper clinical exposure it starts now these four years are followed by a six months compulsory internship training when we say compulsory that means without this compulsory training you will not get the degree the bpt degree will be inclusive of the four years active teaching and followed by six months of rotatory internship and rotatory when we say it means that you know we rotate the uh, student in various departments of the hospital wherever physiotherapy is applicable so as you can say we have listed orthopedics neuro cardiopulmonary sports pediatrics we have obs and gyne and so on so in each of these departments wherever physiotherapy treatment can give any kind of uh, you know curative as well as uh, preventive kind of support the internship rotation needs to be there so that when the student graduates from the university he or she is very well aware of all the streams which are there in from which you know from wherein he or she may get the patients so that is what is meant by the rotatory internship and the compulsory word is there because without this internship you will not get the degree so you need to attach your internship certificate then we have the bpt lateral entry now this is something which saves a year for those children who have already completed their diploma so uh, you know diploma is available in certain parts of the country so though more or less it is obsolete now but at times you know we get students who have probably done diploma 3 years back or 5 years back or even 10 years back and who are now interested to enhance their degree because somewhere they feel that you know degree is also very much important to carry out the practice or for the jobs and so on so in this case recognizing the fact that a, a student who has already undergone a diploma training is you know uh, expert enough to directly enter into the second year so we no longer make it you know compulsory for him or her to learn the basic subjects which are being taught in the first two semesters and the student who has already done the diploma can take a lateral entry into the second year that means the third semester so virtually what happens the duration of the course shortens from four and a half years to three and a half years and then if we talk about the post graduate programs we have mpt in ortho mpt in neuro mpt in cardiopulmonary mpt in sports and mpt in pediatrics so first we will talk about the detailed uh, discussion about the bpt so in case of bpt you see uh, there is uh, in india there is a body which is known as indian association of physiotherapists this is not a statutory body it does not give any kind of approvals for the conduct but it is a uh, a body which uh, you know the certification of which is accepted by the regulatory bodies which are existing ab abroad 
so let me clarify this if the student passes out from uh, an institute which is recognized by indian association of physiotherapists the regulatory body for physiotherapy in say canada or us or uk or any other country or malaysia for that matter they recognize you know uh, the degree earned by that student if it is recognized by iap otherwise the there are certain tests which the child needs to undergo which are extra to the regular test so if the you complete your bpt from an institute which is recognized by iap what happens the battery of tests through which the student has to undergo that becomes a little lesser and then as i shared with you rotatory internship is there in the first two semesters it is purely theory and practical from third and in the third and fourth semester we give you very brief stints of clinical exposure and from the fifth semester onwards there is a clinical posting which starts wherein you know the students would be going to various hospitals or clinics opd clinics accompanied of course by one of the faculty members and therein they get hands on exposure to the patients and the clinical practices which are being offered in the physiotherapy units of the hospital or stand alone physiotherapy units then coming to the masters of physiotherapy as you can see like all most of the other masters courses this course is also for 2 years now uh, the difference between bpt and mpt is that in this case there is no internship which is after the 2 years so within these 2 years the clinical exposure is given the second year includes the research part also wherein you will be taking a, a research project in which you know of course you will have a guide in the terms of uh, faculty members you will be working on the patients various aspects of their health doing the research along with the active learning in theory and practical also and then you will be compiling that data and very happy to share that many of our children are able to you know publish their work in very reputed journals also as far as the mpt is concerned so with right from the second year the research part also starts so in this i will take these things one by one when we talk of orthopedics you know uh, the stream mainly focuses on the problems which are associated with the bones ligaments muscular injuries as well as you know the surgeries so any kind of injuries which happen because of either bones or ligaments or muscles and so on which require any kind of correction one thing second thing you know a patient has probably undergone a knee replacement surgery or some kind of uh, you know stitching of the ligaments if there was a tearing of ligament and so on so in such cases also before the surgery and after the surgery also physiotherapy intervention is done to get the best results so that you know the surgery shows its maximum optimum effects so that is regarding the orthopedic part when we talk of neurology neurology as the name suggests the uh, disorders which would be handled here would be those which are originating either from the uh, central nervous system including the brain and the spinal cord or the peripheral nervous system so in this case you know right from small babies who have cp cerebral palsy to very elderly people who are suffering from alzheimer or who are suffering from you know parkinsonism uh, all these patients land up in the uh, neuro clinics and in neuro clinics you know generally speaking the therapies are much longer as compared to the orthopedic intervention so the patient who comes generally stays with the physiotherapist for a longer longer kind of time it could be you know 3 months also it could be a year also it could be uh, uh, more than a year also and it could be life long also so even you see the people who have some uh, issues with the speaking people uh, stammer and so on so they also at times land up with the 
uh, in neurophysiotherapist because the fault somewhere lies within the nervous system then talking about the sports pt when uh, you know whenever uh, our sports people uh, the players and the athletes they bring gold medals and silver medals we feel very happy we feel very proud but you know there is a very technical aspect of any kind of sports so what happen you know the way they handle the equipment their sports equipment the way they run the way they sit down the way they take rest the even you know the the kind of exercises they are doing before and after and uh, you know their sleep time and everything so that also matters a lot while deciding their performance so in sports physiotherapy generally you might have seen they uh, for the star uh, sports persons there are two people who are always accompanying them one is their coach and the other is their physio so uh, very proudly i would like to share that uh, you know the golden boy of olympics neera chopra who is uh, from lpu he is physio physiotherapist also is an alumnus of lpu he is our uh, ex student uh, dr ishan so he uh, was taking care of all the uh, you know physio aspects of neera chopra while uh, neera chopra was you know competing trophy for asian games or other games or even olympics so immediately after his victory you know you will see his pics with two people immediately uh, close to him around him one was his coach and the other was our alumnus who was his acting as his physiotherapist right coming to uh, you know cardio pulmonary specialization now this is a very very uh, expert kind of or very very specialized kind of specialization or stream wherein you know the uh, expert uh, skills are imparted to the students to handle the problems or ailments of heart as well as lungs and the rest part of the you know when it is heart of course the vascular system comes along and when it is lungs the pulmonary entire pulmonary system comes along so many of you might have heard that you know during uh, covid there were many people who got an infection and then they had maybe high bp or palpitation and uh, asthma and problem in uh, breathing and so on even a few people who took uh, vaccine also reported that they you know suffered from some uh, small stints of uh, breathing difficulties so cardio pulmonary physiotherapy is that part of the practice which teaches the uh, practitioner or the student how to handle the issues related to cardiac as well as pulmonary ailments now in this also it is not just the ailments which are treated or uh, you know the which are prevented it is also the surgery which is taken care of you might have heard all of you must be aware that you know when the patient undergoes the bypass surgery or even angio plasty which is in layman language known as ballooning so there are a lot of precautions to be taken afterwards now in this case you know before the surgery also and after the surgery so before the surgery we start preparing the patient if the surgery is going to be done the you know we see to it that you know his or her lung capacity is increased by giving him or her the required exercises after the surgery also the exercises will start so that you know the patient while lying on the bed does not simply uh, you know lie idle and uh, is not able to take up the uh, physical challenges after he he or she becomes upright so this is the preventive before the surgery or pre op before the surgery and post op after the surgery care which is very much required you know which day the patient is going to start walking which day the patient is going to become upright how long uh, you know what kind of strides he should he or she should take while walking and what is the posture which is to be maintained similarly you know when uh, the patient has any kind of uh, problem say for example let us talk about covid only so if we feel that the patient is 
you know stuck with covid and the problem is going to linger on so with the elderly patients particularly at that time only physiotherapy started so that you know the patient does not develop or can avoid too much of the uh, breathing issues right or cardiac issues so these kind of exercises are given both as a precautionary measure and after the surgery to improve the or after the illness to improve the outcome of the uh, intervention whether it is medical intervention or it is surgical intervention now coming to the last specialization when we talk of pediatric conditions as the name suggests this kind of physiotherapy basically deals with the children so children means the babies also of the age less than 3 and the children who are basically below the age of 12 so you see the treatment for the uh, pediatric patients or the children or the babies is generally very different from that for the adults because you know their metabolic systems have not yet developed their uh, muscles are still growing their bones are still growing so we need to be very particular while you know imparting any kind of pt treatment or pt intervention to these uh, children so in pediatric conditions we have a full fledged vertical by the name of mpt in pediatrics so here you will mostly be handling the uh, children who are below the age of 12 then coming to the most important aspect of any educational program you see uh, what are the career prospects after the courses are done what are the career prospects after you complete your bachelor's or you complete your masters so as you would have by now already guessed the biggest opportunity for the physiotherapists lies in the hospitals because you know now all the hospitals you would i think appreciate would be trying to get the maximum or the best results out of their intervention right so any hospital would want that a patient who comes into the hospital for any kind of treatment when he or she goes out should be as completely cured as possible should be able to revert back to his or her original lifestyle as much as possible so in this now all the people have all the medical uh, fraternity has also realized that you know following up with the physiotherapy treatment you know initially also and follow up also is going to increase the prognosis or the outcomes of the treatment which is given by the doctors so all almost all the hospitals these days they have a physiotherapy unit in them so they are going to employ physiotherapists there the next setting for the uh, career in physiotherapy would be those of educational institutes including universities and colleges then we'll come to schools also so in universities and colleges you see it is not just the teaching department like ours wherein you can get some uh, good placement one of course is teaching you can become a you know lecturer in the uh, initial phase and moving on to ap and then uh, professor and so on but there is also an option wherever in universities and colleges you know the sports departments are there most of the schools and universities have them you know they have their own set of sports people who um, you know uh, participate in various sports on the behalf of the university or college so they also require the support of physiotherapists so physiotherapists are employed in the educational institutes for those children also and apart from that even if the physiotherapist department is per se not there but the physical education department is there again the children of physical education department they need the expert guidance of physiotherapist to enhance their performance so in the universities and colleges it is basically uh, three four departments who would need the requirement of a physiotherapist one of course is the physiotherapy department then we have physical education department and then apart from that we have the sports department then a uh, third option as you can see is that of special schools now uh, audience let me share with you that special schools are those schools who impart teaching or training to the special children 
now special children are those children who have special needs so uh, you know the children who have probably uh, had any kind of accident and lost their limb or there has been some polio stricken kind of children or there are cerebral uh, palsy children or there are spinal cord injuries children who have you know very specific special needs so these children with special needs are uh, you know put into certain schools wherein uh, they are a, there as a group right so in those special schools there is a mandate for the presence of physiotherapists their regular teachers are not able to completely tackle their issues because each child has a different issue as far as the health is concerned so special schools they have different kind of faculty with different kind of qualifications so for them you know the presence of a physiotherapy is almost a mandate it is necessary to have a physiotherapist then coming to the sports industry so we have talked about the sports people they need uh, the support of physiotherapy why sports industry because as i shared with you in the previous slide also you know the equipments which are used by the sports persons they need to be designed in such a way that they give the they are able to help or they are able to support the sports person in getting the optimum performance out of him or her you know you would see that they the the sports persons they are very uh possessive about their uh, if we talk of cricket people very about, about their bats and if we talk of you know people like uh, saina nehwal and uh, the the people who would play badminton or the people who would play uh, tt or the people who would play, play lawn tennis and so on so you know they are very possessive about their rackets so why is it so because somewhere the equipment that you are using is becomes an asset for you because somewhere you know it fits in very properly and it has been optimized so how is that optimization done it is done by the physiotherapists only because they are the people who understand this kind of expertise to the best level so sports industry also they employ physiotherapists to guide them in the designing and manufacturing of the sports equipment then you know you might have heard about rehabilitation centers now when we talk of rehabilitation centers we talk of the rehabilitation centers which are there to uh, you know bring the patient back to the uh, level of his or her activity when he or she was normal so there could be a rehabilitation after the medical treatment also there is a rehabilitation particularly very very importantly after any kind of surgery also you know how for how long the patient lies in the bed does not move when he starts you know sitting up when he or she starts moving around uh, you know standing him or herself till what time he or she is uh, using a walker when independent walk starts and so on and then it also includes the rehabilitation centers which are meant for those people who have somehow been you know got into the web of drug abuse so all these rehabilitation centers they require the services of physiotherapists to enhance their recovery so that you know as quickly as possible they are able to regain the status which they had before that illness or injury or you know unfortunate episode occurred so rehabilitation centers also they employ physiotherapists to ensure the quickest possible recovery of their patients then talking about the government sector you know uh, let me share with you all these above said uh, kind of career prospects whether it is government hospitals or it is government universities and colleges or government schools which are special meant specifically for special children and the sports industries or sports organizations which are run by the government they all employ physiotherapists so it is practically this entire sector the rehabilitation centers the sports organizations the schools universities hospitals which are owned by the government they also employ the physiotherapists then you know something very interesting 
we have physiotherapy clinics also so there are a few uh, hospitals you know which would not have the uh, physiotherapy department in them there are many clinics where the doctor sits you know uh, maybe has some ipd also but they are smaller units and they are not able to have their own independent physiotherapy department so what is done here is there is an arrangement kind of thing there are stand alone physiotherapy clinics why do i say stand alone because they are not a part of any hospital there are stand alone physiotherapy clinics you might have seen you know uh, these days uh, almost every part of the city has a physiotherapy clinic wherein the patients come from either the hospitals or the clinics or you know many patients they have already had a stint with the physiotherapy and they know that physiotherapy is going to be beneficial for them so they just walk in themselves without any recommendation of a doctor right so physiotherapy clinics is a very major option for the physiotherapists apart from that you know many of the physiotherapists they start their own private practice i have seen many of our alumni are currently into their private practice wherein apart from you know having their own physiotherapy clinic they also go for the home services why is so why is the home service so very important for the physiotherapy profession is that most of the people at least you know 20 25 30% of the patients of physiotherapy are um, in that condition that it is very difficult to move them so the family or the caretakers they try to avoid taking them to a hospital or a clinic and they expect you know even if they have to spend something extra that you know a home treatment kind of thing is given so what happens there are many physiotherapists who would oblige such patients go and deliver the home therapy so that is the part of the private practice either start your own post physiotherapy clinic or start giving the home treatment or there are a few people who would do both the things right and then we have fitness industry uh, all of you must be aware that in last few months unfortunately we have heard of a few incidences where you know uh, some very eminent personalities uh, either got very sick or they lost their lives uh, either before i mean during gymming or after gymming or due to excessive exercise so now it has become uh, understood to the fitness industry also that whenever such kind of regimes are to be given you know if a very strong exercise regime is to be given to any of the people who are uh, coming to their gym or their fitness industry it has to be it should be done under an expert advice so you see the physiotherapists are now being hired in fitness industry also to ensure that no mishap occurs as far as the exercise is being done or undertaken under their expert opinion then you see in recent times say about 5 last 5 to 10 years the corporate sector has welcomed the physiotherapy professionals with open arms in what sense we have two three very nice options which are coming up one is that of insurance sector you know whenever uh, you might have seen whenever you go for any kind of insurance life insurance or health insurance you are expected to fill a form right and if you are older you are also expected to undergo a few tests so before giving an insurance to any of the patients any of the people the insurance agency tries to find out the health status of that person so that you know if somebody is very sick already uh, the medical insurance people will not issue the insurance or if the patient is critically ill and you know terminally ill the insurance company will not even give him or her the life insurance so how do they understand this you know they are the people who are mostly from management and economics and so on so they employ the people who understand the various deeper aspects of the health sciences right 
so they look for people like physiotherapy who know what is the implication of with this particular disease so therein the insurance companies they hire the physiotherapists apart from that another sector which is coming up is that of you know medical scribing so these are the people the medical scribes are the people who are working remotely how uh, there is a patient sitting in say new zealand and there is a doctor right the doctor is examining the patient and then the doctor is counseling the patients giving him or her the prescription now this person who is a medical scribe is sitting in punjab in india is uh, connected with the patient and the doctor in the online mode is able to hear each and every word of the doctor and the patient is able to look at each and every gesture of the patient and the doctor and he or she is is expected to take notes after that the notes are sent to the doctor concerned he would check and verify and then the counseling part comes back to the person who is sitting here in punjab so how does it operate a patient and a doctor team is there which is being connected to the medical scribe through the online mode wherein he or she looks at each of the gesture and listens to each of the word which is being said about this and then writes the description and sends it to the concerned doctor who would say yes or no and then the entire patient counseling is done by the physiotherapist and why are the physiotherapists employed here because they need somebody who can understand the finer nuances of the disease process and the recovery process and then you see uh, research is always an option now that you know we have had a, a very bad stint of a pandemic we know how important research is in the health sciences then i would uh, like to share with you the clinical collaborations that we have so you can practically see all kinds of all types of hospitals you know initially what i called as the rotatory internship so you have to have all kinds of exposure so you can see we have orthopedic hospitals we have multi speciality hospitals we have uh, cardiac hospitals we have trauma centers and joshi hospital actually looks at the neuro cases also dmc hospital again a trauma center neuro and ortho specializations are very very strong here satyam is again a trauma hospital then we have multi speciality hospital in the name of johan then we have a, a hospital for both uh, you know gynae and obs practice and then we have also have a maternity home there and then we also have a collaboration with the nasa and hub nasa is basically a neuro hospital and hub is basically the part which deals with the ortho injuries then you can see this is a stand alone orthopedic hospital so a children will go here take the training under the expert guidance of the doctors come back present their cases and then keep on learning and the uh, you know the internships and the training systems are uh, changed from month to month so that it is not a single hospital where the child learns but it she or she should get exposure to a large number of hospitals so this is one aspect which is very unique to physiotherapy in lpu we have three of our very own opd centers where one is right here in the university wherein you know most of the times we cater to our own children who are either the sports people or who are the uh, you know people who are contributing towards any kind of physical activity say nss or other social kinds of activity so these children may make the major footfall in the uh, campus physiotherapy clinic you can see this is the pick of the campus physiotherapy clinic and then we have this state of the art unit some in the uh, in city of jalandhar so here also the uh, high end equipments are available and the patients can obviously you know a large number of patients come and the children can get a very strong exposure after 
uh, you know visiting the physiotherapy clinic of lpu and then this is a small clinic that we have in phagwada so by maintaining three centers right at university inside the uh, north part and in very close to phagwada this is campus this is jalandhar this is the phagwada uh, opd then coming to the research and innovation you know we have filed a large number of patents our children and our faculty and a very good number of research uh, publications that have come from the thesis of the uh, pg students and the phd students so this is just one example wherein we have developed a system in uh, collaboration with our it department also electronics department also wherein you know we assess the equal distribution of load on the two feet otherwise what happens one limb becomes stronger and the other becomes weaker the their sizes also they start differing the foot size also at times start differing and at times you know the patient starts remaining tired despite everything so we developed uh, an instrument which would tell you about the gait is your gait balanced or are you tilting towards one side or there is a faulty gait so this will give immediate signal about the limb load symmetry right so this is just one glimpse of the research that has been going on the department there are uh, you know uh, almost 50 such research projects which are currently running and a large number has already been completed also then children we have uh, collaborations with some international institutes also so you can see we have collaboration with european industry we have association with malaysia we have association with university of sumatra utara and then so you see uh, sri lanka and indonesia both of them they are keen or signing with us the collaborative mous this is another aspect in fact only yesterday our team from physiotherapy has come back after you know attending a meeting for the erasmus project now this project was brought by lpu faculty of physiotherapy with a total budget of approximately 9 cr out of which you know we have a number of supporting partners who are being uh, shelled out the money out of this and then you know we are hosting them next month all these you can see uh, university of polytechnica valencia ipb university isb or university of nicosia this is in cyprus and so on. lisboa this is in portugal so uh, you see in this under this team we have trained a number of children we have trained a number of faculty in developing their skills in imparting the skills further to the sports people so this is all i wanted to share and i am very hopeful that you know uh, you would have found this to be useful so i'll uh, hand over the script now to the organizers they can take over at this point thank you so much ma'am for sharing your vision and this was indeed very informative session for all the attendees so thank you so much ma'am for joining and we will quickly move to our admission expert ms rachna bajaj for the admission part of the university so over to you ma'am so good evening everyone i hope you all are doing fine and safe at your home so i'll be just quickly sharing the glimpse of the university which you will be joining this year or most probably in the coming years so first up in the list we have lpu creating history when 12 out of 13 lpu students won olympic medals and brought laurels to india moving ahead with the rankings because i suppose this is the most important aspect the student will be considering before applying for uh, or taking admission in any university or college first up in the list we have the times higher education impact rankings 2022 where lpu has been ranked 74th globally moving ahead with another feather the atal ranking of institution on innovation achievements where lpu has been ranked third in india the world university rankings of 2022 where lpu has been ranked 36th among top universities of india 
So moving ahead with the campus life and exposure offered. So as a student, make sure that you enjoy your campus life and gain as much child exposure you can. And if I talk about LP students, LP students have got several opportunities to interact with Nobel laureates and they have participated not just in national but international level events as well. So I'll just quickly show you the glimpse of few of the events. First up in the list, we have 106 Indian Science Congress with a focal theme, Future India Science and Technology, which was inaugurated by Honorable Prime Minister of India, Shri Narendra Modi. Moving ahead, Nobel Laureate, the Lai Lama Jing was here at LPU for the fifth convocation. We also had former President of India, late Sri Pranam Mukherjee for the convocation twice at LPU. Late Sri Arun Jaitliji for the inauguration of LPU Startup School. Some familiar faces, Gaur Gopal Dasji, a motivational speaker and a life coach. He interacted with the students and motivated them about life. Some of the heartthrobs, we had Shah Rukh Khan, Deepika Padukone at campus for their promotion. We had Sonam Kapoor, Coke Studio was uh, organized at LPU, MS Dhoni and several others. So, now let's talk about the infrastructure. I'll be just quickly showing you the infrastructure, the labs, the uh, classrooms, the theatres which will be available for our students at LPU because you will be learning in these uh, in, the, in the infrastructure. So this is an inside view of our computer labs, of our four-story library with approximately 20 lakh books and students also have access to these books in online mode as well. An outside view of our amphitheater, LPU has two to three amphitheaters where several local natals, theatre acts or skits take place. An inside view of our Shanti Devi with the auditorium with a capacity of 2,500 audience, being the largest in this region. An outside view of our university mall. Let's take you inside this mall. It has all the basic facilities to be related to four year facilities, dining areas, uh, stationeries, clothing, or be it related to games like bowling, pool, etc. A gymnasium is also available inside the university mall. 24 hour facility of university hospital with ambulance facilities inside the campus, be it related to eye specialists, physiotherapy wards, dental facilities, general wards, etc. So now this is an outside view of our Shanti Devi Mittal Indoor Stadium. It has several sports facilities like a proper Olympic level swimming pool, 10 to 12 badminton coach for our students, shooting area, a beautiful picture clicked by one of our students, and a mesmerizing night view of our university hostels. So now let's move ahead with another aspect of our today's interaction, that is the fees and scholarship and how you can apply for admissions. So what you have to do is just simply visit our website, which is www.ilq.in. And on the top, you will see an icon of admissions where we have segregated all the programs like after 10th, after 12th, after graduation and after post-graduation for PhD work. So let's say if I'm interested in after 12th program, I'll click on it and all the disciplines which are available at LPU will be visible in front of you. So as we have students seeking admission in physiotherapy, I'll click on physiotherapy and the program bachelors of physiotherapy will be available in front of you. So as the program states that the duration of this program will be four and a half years with total nine semesters, the eligibility goes minimum 60% in 12th with English, Physics, Chemistry and Biology as compulsory subject and subject to qualifying the LPU NIST exam which is stated as National Entrance and Scholarship Test. This test is not only for eligibility but it will also help you avail better scholarship benefits. Moving ahead, we have listed the research work, student achievements, the rankings, the curriculum for next five, four and a half years, the department elective and here comes the fees and the scholarship. Although the without scholarship fees for this program goes 80,000 per semester, but we have different categories on the basis of which you can avail scholarship. Let's say if you score between 80 to 89.9 percentage in your 12th, you will directly fall in category 3. That is of 28 percent and your fees will gradually reduce to 57,600 per semester. If you scored even better, you scored between 90 to 94.9 percentage in your 12th, you will directly fall in category 2, that is of 38 percent, and your fees will be reduced to 49,600 per semester. Last but not the least, if you scored 95 percent or above in your 12th, you will directly fall in category 1, that is of 38 percent, and your fees will be reduced to 41,600 per semester. 
in case if you couldn't score well you have option of lp nist exam as well this is the total marks and the cut off required to fall in category 1 2 or 3 according moving ahead once you scroll down we have listed some other scholarships as well here we have the neat criteria the neat national rank if you fall in any such any of these national ranks you can avail scholarship of category 1 2 or 3 as i have discussed in the above slides some other special scholarships on innovation startup and entrepreneurship on the basis of sports culture r&d co curricular social service and bravery awards special scholarship for toppers of education board who fall in merit list of 2022 so if you have any such achievement make sure that you share your details with us on our email id which is admissions at the rate ilpu.co. moving ahead with some financial aid financial aid for need based uh, like if i talk about single girl child single mothers or etc financial aid for serving retired different cpf military personnel and their dependents financial aid to orphans financial aid to persons with certain disability so you can share such information with your near ones who are in need of such scholarships the important dates because i suppose this is another important aspect to apply for admission at aiu as you can see that the last date to apply for lpnest application which is the first step to apply for admissions is 30th june 2022 and further you will be allotted with exam dates between 6th june to 5th of july and within 24 working hours your result will be declared and accordingly you can proceed for admissions in case if you have any queries regarding fees or scholarship or how to apply for it feel free to get in touch with us through our live video counseling i can you can get a call scheduled for yourself our whatsapp team is available for you and we have listed our helpline number right below the website so i'll wind up with one last thing we have already conducted such webinars in past and we will be keep conducting such informative webinars in the coming future if you want to register yourself or want to go through all the past videos just simply click on admissions and on the left side you can see an icon of lpus edu fair webinars so once you click on it all the details related to the webinars will be available right in front of you so just click on register fill your name email id phone number and you will be good to go So over to you, Ruby Ma'am. I hope I have shared all the basic details with our students, which can be helpful for them to apply for admissions at any time. All the best, everyone. Thank you so much, Rachna Ma'am, for the detailed information about the admission part. So attendees, it is rightly said that decisions determine destiny. So don't wait for the last date. book your date decide your own date of admission as soon as possible so with this we conclude our today's webinar which was on the topic road to recovery physiotherapy as a profession so now i would like to express my appreciation to the experts for their valuable contribution for today's webinar my deepest gratitude goes to all who attended this webinar and helped to make it such a successful one and experts i'm sure your years of research your years of experience will definitely help the audience to choose the right path so with this i ruby gill finally sign off from the session thank you everyone